Hello, everyone. Uh, so welcome to this Notion webinar. This is our weekly webinar now where you'll get insight about how to utilize Notion. And uh, we're running these all the way till Christmas. Now, if you're watching this uh, after, that is absolutely fantastic. It's amazing to have you. You are welcome to skip forward to roughly 15 minutes in and uh, we will be starting the feature then to give you obviously the full webinar and uh, near the end we'll do the webinar for about 20 minutes 25 minutes uh, and then we'll answer any of your questions uh, we'll also pause and answer any questions throughout but these first 15 minutes are a great opportunity to meet some of the people in this chat and also gather some questions uh, that you may be having about notion now the topic about this web the, the, the topic of this webinar is uh specifically uh, Notion and taking advantage of advanced databases. Now, exactly what we're going to do is, is create three databases. And uh, we're going to create a content calendar. We're also going to create an exercise planner and also a visual to-do list. Now, we can access these in some of the templates. We'll showcase some of the amazing features that you can build off of this um, and fully show you around how to take advantage of databases. So this is great for not just beginners, but intermediates and those who want to take their database use a little bit further. And we'll be building these from scratch to show you the ways that you can take Notion to full advantage. So um, we obviously are going to get a few people in the chat. Um, we'll be here until about three o'clock, so 13 minutes of questions or anything you're having. So I'm seeing a few questions or, or people in the chat, which is great. Uh, welcome, guys. ZR says, what's up, Francesco? How's your day going? Day is going very well so far. Um, I'm looking forward to this webinar. I got my cup of tea, so that's going to be good. Uh, Red, it is good to have you. Um, where are you guys from? Uh, it'd be great to hear. So um, something I do want to mention before we start, if you're watching this in advance or you're watching it now, uh, we do have a current Black Friday deal on the course. So if you want to check that out, I added a link in the description. Um, but this is going to be uh, a really good one. So maybe I should outline a few of the um, future webinars that we've got planned. Um, let me just go over to Notion. So um, this week is obviously creating advanced databases. We're touching on three specific databases. Next Wednesday is Get Ready for Christmas with Notion. This should be a good one in terms of helping you plan all the key members of the family and, uh, you know, making sure and family and friends, well, whether they've got everything for Christmas that you need to get them, uh, giving you, a, you know, some maybe some December sales to take advantage of and also the rest of sort of December to make sure you get it in before the 24th uh, and wrapped, hopefully. Then on the 11th of December, we're doing a get started with project management in Notion which I think will be very useful for teams. Uh, we're gonna create some databases that different team members can view. So these databases that uh, have different views for, for example, could be a specific department or it even could be the specific um, view that they want to see it by, maybe a calendar view or a board view, um, really up to the person and how to save them inside of the, uh, with the filters and the sorting connected up. And then the final one of the year, December 18th, we have building a personal or professional CRM in Notion. Now, I think this one will be useful because it's more like um, how to go about like building like relational sort of relationships and adding all of the information down, which I think people can take away and use. Um, then when we start the new year, we've got your 2020 resolutions in Notion, and we may even have... Um, a bonus uh, sort of webinar that will be available. So if you are just joining this chat, it is great to have you. Feel free to introduce yourself in the live chat. Um, I'll be saying hello to you in a moment. Uh, so uh, that'd be great to hear. Now we're about 10 minutes away from starting this one. So again, any questions uh, in advance, uh, you'll feel free to pop them in there too. We'll answer them. Uh, hey, Peter, uh, good to have you here. Uh, I'm glad uh, you could make it. Um, we've also got Red and ZR in the chat, so it's great to have them. So Notion's obviously one of the things that I um, have been speaking about a lot recently. Um, 
I wanted to sort of use a bit of this time as well to sort of wrap up some of the ways that um, I've been using it. 2020 has been, uh, 2019, not 2020. 2019 has been a good year for my Notion use, I'd say. Um, and I'd say it's sort of rapidly grown in terms of my setup. Um, so I'm using it now for a lot more than I thought, using it for finances to be able to sort of plan uh, the future. We're also using it now for our little uh, baby that we're planning to have in May. So that's uh, going to be like a really big database of like baby clothes and stuff to get. And, uh, and also I'm using it a lot more now to try and set up organizing, um, for example, like uh, my exercises at the gym and workouts. I'm trying to do more of that. Um, and hopefully I can replicate the database I've created for myself for the exercise planner um, today with you all. So yeah, uh, for those who are joining, we're super early. You're nine minutes early. So uh, feel free to grab a cup of tea if you want to. Um, I maybe should start this like 10 minutes before. This is exactly what happened last time. It literally just was like me yabbering on. So if you want to come back <laughs> in uh, in nine minutes, then you are welcome to because we're just going to be sort of chatting and rambling here. Um, I'm curious as well, before we begin, if anybody watching, feel free to share any uh, and how long you've been with Notion, how you are using it, because um, that'd be absolutely fantastic to hear. So uh, feel free to put that in the chat. Uh, Quest360, um, hey, um, you, did, you, you just said, how do you like Zoom? Um, now, Zoom, I've been mightily impressed with it. I've been using it as a, a recording software digitally for a while, um, like being able to do meetings and stuff. But I didn't realize they actually had like the, um, not the webinar recording, but the live recording. It is epic. Like this has made my life so much easier. Um, and I didn't really think of it in the start. So doing Zooms now to run this call is absolutely fantastic. Um, so Peter, um, I've been reluctant to go all in with Notion as Marie Poulin has. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people were like, um, it, I guess it's one of those applications that sometimes people feel like there's a big investment to like take that massive leap um, with the application. And it, it feels like sometimes you have to like sit over a full weekend to learn it and fully take advantage of it. But I don't really think you should necessarily do that, although it's, it's up to you how you go about setting it up. But, um, you know, whether it's you actually just like doing a little bit per day, five minutes every after, that's how I work. <laughs> um, five minutes of um, notion tweaking at the end of a day is probably better for people like me than doing like a big overhaul of it. Um, but yeah, Marie Poulin, um, if you guys haven't checked her out, she's here on YouTube. The spelling is like Peter has said it, Marie Poulin. I realized that highlighting it, you won't be able to see that. <laughs> P, Papa, Oscar, uh, Ultra, <laughs> Lima, Indigo, and N for Notion. Um, it's how you spell it. And she has a fantastic YouTube channel that is blinking brilliant. So definitely check it out. Okay, um, Nithin, we have a question from you. We're still about six minutes away, so um we can have uh everything uh answered hopefully uh can i link a web clipper page inside a page which is inside a table of a database table in a database hmm that's a good question so you can link the web clipper to anything I, i'm not too sure whether your what your question is but you can link the the web clipper to save to anything that is a database as long as you know the name of it so for example, if the database is within a table, then that database will still have an original identity, which is its title. You can search for that and uh, you can save the web clipper to it. It's uh, all fairly easy. Uh, you may wanna look at the Notion FAQ for web clipper. They do a better way of demonstrating it. Um, so hopefully that will help. But Nitin, uh, my email, I will put it in the chat because if anybody wants to email me specific questions after this, you know where I am, hopefully. Uh, sorry. I have the tendency of having awful spelling. There you go. Uh, so Nathan, if you want to send me a specific example, um, I guess you want to streamline the way that you're using college applications. I can imagine that would be a lot easier. 
Um, Kunil, you started new, using Notion this week, and I think this, this particular feature will be very useful. So if you're joining and you're actually curious about this webinar, this is going to be about three database examples. We're going to do a content calendar. We're going to do an exercise planner, and we're also going to do a uh, an exercise planner. I, I this is the worst. I should remember this. <laughs> we got one more, um, which is a visual to-do list. <laughs> so uh, we'll be touching on that. And I think it'll be perfect uh, for you guys today. So Peter said, I know you use other apps as well. So what are your thoughts about it? Um, as well as Notion, so what are your thoughts about it? Um, I use it alongside um, Todoist. Uh, I also use Evernote. So I, I've done this in my entire workflow video. So if you want to see that, the, the best way to demonstrate it is Notion holistic planning, Todoist actionable, actionable doing, so 30 days of actionable tasks. And then Evernote is my like filing cabinet to put all those files and stuff for later. So it's not really, you know, too far off um, that. So uh, Chase, um, oh, good to see you, JJ. Thanks for joining the chat. Um, Chase per same. Quite honestly, every time I open Notion, I get extremely overwhelmed by Notion's vast expanse of possibilities. And this is actually a reality, Chase. Like a lot of people are struggling with this is actually like, oh my God, Notion does so much. What can I use it for? And, um, you know, making sure you're sort of taking uh, slow steps towards it and not getting to, because I watch Marie Poulin's videos and they're amazing. But at the same time, I'm like, calm down, Francesco. You can't go that hardcore with it. Um, but it is really cool to have that. So uh, it's, a, it's a reality. I, I think we should call it something like Notion, Notion Overwhelm. Super Kraken is there a way to bulk duplicate items in a database? Say I have 10 items and I need to create within a database monthly. Um, so are you taking, I'm just curious, are you taking advantage of the template button? that uh, allows you to create a new row, obviously a new entity or item inside of a database. If so, and it's a monthly item that you're adding, this can be really, really helpful. So please maybe give a bit, bit more context. And if I don't get back to you, pop it in the email because I'm more than happy to help. Red, I've been using Notion for a couple of months for personal projects and blog optimization. Been meaning to learn more advanced ways to use it. Hmm. Well, hopefully this one helps today. Um, I can imagine we'll get a few questions throughout this. And, and if you want me to push stuff a little bit further in this video, then feel free to put it in the chat. Um, we are about three minutes away from three minutes, two minutes away from going, guys. So I'll try and get to all of these questions before we start. Quest 360 put, I have used Notion for simple things. I will be using it for my CPA studies. That's awesome to hear. Ritzfit put, love both, but Coda's integration with Shopify is amazing. I feel like Coda has the upper hand right now. I like the way Notion looks much better though. <laughs> Sad face. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and that's something I'll be looking to sort of bring together in a video soon. Uh, so hopefully. JJ is great to, great to have you, as I said. Uh, Toran, great to see you. Um, Kunil put, I joined to know more about databases. I wanted to learn how to link my clients, projects, tasks, notes, databases in Notion. Hopefully we can touch on that today. Uh, I didn't intend to do too many relational databases, although I will show you a way that we can get started with relational databases. Uh, JJ put a question, why don't you use Notion as your filing cabinet since it has a decent web clipper? The web clipper is not that amazing, but the major thing is more about being able to find my files more effectively and offline abilities. They're two things that inside of Evernote, and I also like my files stored locally. So that's another huge bonus for me. That's what I'd say, JJ. Torren, good to have you here. Um, Milt Mil Addis, um, hello from Greece, he says. Or, yeah, he says, guess the video will be available after broadcast. You are 100% right. If you're watching this and going, I can't actually afford this time off and you want to watch it after, it will appear as a video here on the YouTube channel and you can watch it play back. You probably would need to skip to 15 minutes if you're watching it, though, um, to actually get things rolling. And to wrap up, Kashyap, hey, Kunil, thanks. I'm glad to have you both. 
So uh, let's dive into this webinar. Let me take a sip of tea. Uh, Yodi, good to have you back from last week. Thanks for that, that's real kind. I'm excited. Uh, I'm sure I'll be using Notion for everything. Okay, welcome to the Notion Made Simple webinar this week. It is good to have you guys. I'm so excited, I'm getting so used to these webinars. Um, today, what we're doing is we're doing three specific advanced database types. Um, the first one, we're gonna do a content calendar. I can also show you my active content calendar that I'm using. We're really gonna focus in on the way that you can use filters to separate vast amounts of content or for example, um, different types of content, which I think will be very helpful. So inside of that database, filters will be the key focus. We're then going to touch on the exercise planner, which I think is very handy if you're using it to plan future workouts and also log ones that you've just done. And in that feature, we are gonna to touch on uh, the relational databases. Only slightly, we're gonna do uh, the menu concept, which we'll touch on. And then finally, we're going to do a visual to-do list. Um, we're just gonna show you how to do that. It's nothing, we're not gonna to focus too much on it, but if you have any questions throughout this whole thing, um, if you're watching live, feel free to ask them. So uh, I will be pausing if you're watching this back throughout this, so you might get a few uh, common questions throughout this that I think will help you there. So guys, let's begin. Let me get up the old notion. So uh, I've got this brand new page here. Um, I hope you guys can all see it. Let me just check whether I'm seeing everything all blue, 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 blue beautifully. Let's just check. It looks like everything's showing up. Um, so here we are. Now, when you're creating a database, it can be pretty overwhelming sometimes. Sometimes you might feel a little bit overwhelmed, but one of the biggest problems that I think I've seen from a lot of people is when you go and create a database and then you realize you're creating a database and another database and another database and another database when you could just create one to rule them all. Now, I actually had this exact problem and I'm not even yet fully completed on it, but here I have something called a content calendar. Now, in this content calendar, I have a range of different types of content. So obviously we do the YouTube videos, which is here on the channel, and you can see the different YouTube videos appear below. But we also do uh, webinars, we do medium articles and things like that. So being able to see those different types of content is pretty important. Um, but what we do in this one, we use a range of filters so that we can actually see all of the specifics that we need to be able to see in that certain view. So we have different views up here and we'll explain all of that and how to build something like this. Now, the main reason I wanna show you this is not necessarily because it's something that you can be like, okay, I'm gonna go out and create a content calendar. It's more for the concept of actually creating a database that has multiple views and multiple filters. And the reason behind that is so that you guys can go away and begin implementing this in your own databases and centralize them because you know, I used to, I literally used to have a YouTube calendar, a medium calendar, a course calendar, and it goes on. And even I want to be able to merge my podcast and blog calendar into the content calendar, because that would be rather marvelous to have all of those stuff in the right place. So we're going to go ahead and create a page. In this case, let's call it content calendar. And uh, let's give it an icon. Let's give it a, uh, key one there. So I'm just going to give this one just a little M N M S after this, because I don't want to like get confused when I'm searching for my own stuff. That would just be uh, not so good. Um, and obviously you can do this in two ways. You can obviously um, create a database uh, view here straight away. So it's, it's absorbing the page or you can use a, uh, a, a simple inline database. But in this case, we're going to create uh, a full page database. This means it takes over the entire page. And in the nature of content calendar, we're gonna give it a calendar view. So as you can see, this is an expansive view of our calendar. So this is probably a great way to start planning and plotting out content. So in this case, I, I'm probably just gonna start by adding maybe Friday's video, which I know is an iOS reminders video. 
Now I can add all of the regular stuff that I do, but what I might wanna do here is start adding all of the relevant property types. So in this case, this could be the release date. Below here could be the platform. So I might wanna be releasing it on a specific platform. In this case, it would be YouTube. And uh, below I might want to say, for example, uh, the guest that I'm having on for this one. So in this case, the guest could be, uh, actually I don't have a guest for this one, but you get the idea, a very simple structure for me to get going. Now you can do this with um, your specific content for a blog or maybe even for uh, like a planning, a trip. You could have platforms could be the different type of trips you have. Like for example, it could be social, friends and family. It could be a hike. All of these different type of trips you can have that tagged as a multi-select, which can come in handy when you're filtering stuff down. So before I move on, I'm going to make the release date available. I'm gonna have the platform pop up and the guest appear as well. So there we go, I can move this fella about and I can even add more. So let's quickly add another one. So this is one that we're planning tomorrow, uh, actually on Thursday, no Friday. Ah, I can't remember what day it is. Um, it will be on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. So we're planning that one to go out Saturday. Um, so you can see the different types of stuff here. But in this case, I might be like, uh, you know, I actually want to um, do a webinar today. So this is the actual webinar. Don't know why a guy come up surfing. And I might want to say it's a webinar. So that's a different type of content. So I'm going to add that there. And you can see here, I've got two multi-select property types, webinar and YouTube. Now, as you can see, they all appear normally in this view. And that's because I actually haven't set any filters, any sorting or any views. Now, obviously if I press add view, I can go ahead and add a new calendar type, a calendar view. And this is very easy to do. And I'm gonna call this one YouTube because in this specific calendar I'm about to create, I only want to see YouTube videos. So in this case, I'm gonna make sure all the multi-selects are on and you can see oh no webinar appears here how do i get rid of that so you simply go ahead and press filter add filter you choose the platform and contains youtube and webinar disappears magically so if i go back to that original view the webinar should appear and in this case i might give it a call for example all content so this is what I've done on the other experience and I found this one particularly helpful. Now this doesn't mean you can stop there when it comes to um, planning and organizing that content. You may want to add a status to the property types area. Now the status can be a multi-select, but you may want to add, for example, it's in the script phase and uh, for example, you could go up here and hit property type, add the status on, so the script appears down here. And also I need to script this one as well. And uh, over here, it's just a case of filming it. And uh, you can see the two property types that I've added there. So film is in nice and green. So if you wanted to, you can take advantage of not just the calendar view, but an, an, another type of view. So you could, for example, call this view planning and you can create a board view. Now, when you're planning stuff, you may want to see um, and do stuff based on batch activities. So for example, if I'm like, when uh, Wednesday afternoons, they're all about scripting for me. I, I've got the power to do some scripting. I can't film it because I don't have the equipment or things like that. So you can go over to this board view, which is in planning there. We just went ahead and created that go to group by, then to status. And you can see, great, these are the ones that I can start scripting. And then you can even be smart and add some groups like um, editing. So you can move stuff across the statuses. Okay, I've, I've script this one, I can move it across. Okay, I've actually filmed the Notion Made Simple webinar. It's now in the editing process. So this whole concept can be extremely useful. And if I go back to all content, you should see the status change between these two. And this is something that I've actually just started doing over on my own content calendar and I found it incredibly useful. 
Now, it really doesn't stop there. There are so many more ways that you can take advantage of this. Now, for example, if you wanted to, you could do this based on length. So this could be the length of the activity, or it could be um, the time taken you needed. Um, could be whatever sort of property type you wanted there. But let's say this one's going to take me uh, a total of 20 minutes. Um, and next week, next Wednesday, I have a course coming out uh, about to-do list apps. Then I'm like, okay, this one is a different type. It's a course. This one doesn't have any guests. The status is to film. And it's going to take me 60 minutes to film. So you get all the details there starting to roll in, which is nice. And one thing that you can do is when you move these up and down in a different uh, order, they move based in this structure. So that makes it look a lot neater, in my opinion. So what you can do is you can go ahead and create a new view. And uh, in this case, you could create, you could create a calendar view. Uh, let's create a table view just to spice things up. And we're going to say anything that is 45 minutes plus, because maybe I need a blocked amount of time for that. So let's go to filter and let's go to add filter and select the length and is bigger than 30 minutes. And as you can see, you can be like, okay, these are 45 minute projects. And you could even do this with smaller ones too. So if we go back to all content and we can go, okay, this one is uh, only gonna take me 10 minutes to do, 10 minute activity. Uh, and you could keep these refreshed and updated if you wanted to. You could create a new view that might uh, bring together. So we could go to table view and we could go less than 10 minutes. Uh, that was more than 10 minutes on my accidental squiggle of my hand. And I go to, I could even remove some of these property types too and go to filter lower than 11 minutes, let's say. So you can see, okay, I can get these tasks done in less than 10 minutes. So the, the actual views that you can use are a really amazing potential inside of Notion. And we created that fairly fast, guys. So it's not something that, um, you know, you can, you can do it quite rapidly if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna just read a few comments before we move on to the next example. Um, and let's see if that's uh, any helpful. So Taran just said, I just sat down with a cup of Yorkshire tea. That is uh, really great to hear. Um, love, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit more of a Cornish drinker tea. Um, Quest 360 put, question, can I link the to-dos and the calendar? Um, you can, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. I might do a feature on how to create like this uh, notes plus, uh, calendar plus to do's together in one like mass database, <laughs> which would be pretty crazy. Um, but let me know, let me write it down because that's probably a good example. Uh, those who are curious, I'm writing this down inside of Todoist because uh, it's my sort of idea, quick capture. And I'm gonna say uh, all in one database for Notion. So it's a good idea actually, um, Quest 360. Uh, Christian, hello from Brazil. Good to have you. Um, if you guys are watching, um, anyone's watching, of course, um, great to have you all. And I'm really uh, grateful for you to be here. If you do want to check out the Notion Made Simple course, we have a bit of a discount for Black Friday. I'll include that one in the link in below. So, Torren, I have started a great uh, to create a large database for my uni stuff with using filters to separate modules, uh, assignments, and people. And that's exactly a great example of how you can potentially use these filters. Um, I've seen a couple of people use a calendar to filter down social events, which is very helpful. And I actually started using the calendar to actually plan out like work versus social activities, which was really helpful. Um, so that's a great example there, um, Torren. Marie Claude, hello from France, hello from England. Uh, thank you for coming along. Um, how large can databases potentially get? Databases are pretty massive inside of Notion. You can use them for absolutely anything you want. Um, and you know, the, the, I would say the larger the database at the moment, the slower it's gonna load, but it's still pretty wide in terms of like how much entry you can put into it. 
and the the filters are really magical in my opinion um here what only if i had offline mode and a working mobile app they are working on the mobile app that's the good news um about that sorry for that late lap i was like <laughs> probably just need body um Cormoral, uh Cormoral, uh good to see you again is there any way that i can sync my calendar on my iphone with the calendar in notion app right now no luck however it is planning i believe they have a google calendar integration coming i'm not too sure and hello by the way so guys you can leave any chats we're going to move on to the next stage after i just had a sip of tea okay let's get cracking <laughs> it was as simple as that <laughs> uh okay let's go and share the so um for those who just maybe have jumped ahead we went ahead and created a very simple advanced database using a cal content calendar. So let's go ahead and create a visual to-do list and let's save the ex exercise planner for last. So we're going to go ahead and create a new page uh, and we're going to call this one to-do list. Uh, there we go. And we're going to create a nice tick icon because that's obviously a great one to add there. And we're going to add a cover photo as well. So in this case, you, you can do a to-do list, a visual to-do list in many different ways, but the best way is creating it using a board. Now, this can be your inbox here. So when you go ahead and create a board database in Notion, you get met with this view. You get not started, in progress, and completed. And that's really helpful to get started. However, you, know, you might not want the different statuses that they have. So you're going to have to build uh, the statuses however you find suitable. So for example, you could even have multiple uh, statuses to group by, and let's demonstrate that. Over here, we're just going to go ahead and delete these cards just to have a clean slate for you guys. But let's go ahead and start off by renaming these guys. So let's call this one to do and doing and done. So that's our first use of property type, and that will appear here in the status. So what you can do is actually add a new type of property type. So in this case, I'm going to add the multi-select. I'm going to turn this one on. So we're going to call this one something a little bit different. So we're going to call it um, type. We're also going to call, we're also going to add one called number. We're going to say time uh time to do actually that's a so with length of task so that's a number one we're going to have that one on so what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple to do to get the ball rolling because this is the best way to see the property types is to actually open up a card and get going so let's say i need to uh example sign uh, uh get uh, sorry get Cosato, um, Cot or Pram, uh, what, how do you say it? It's like uh, a insurance thing on it or like a guarantee, Jesus. So I'm, I need to get a guarantee on this thing. So I need to sign up to get the guarantee. So I'm gonna sign that to myself in this case. I'm gonna give it a five minute task. I'm also gonna give it the type of maybe family as a task. So maybe I want to change it to a uh, baby because that's something related to the baby. So you can start to see that I've got a task already set up. Now, it looks a pretty, pretty, a little bit too messy, I'd say, in my opinion, but let's clean it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the card preview onto card content. This will come in handy later. Then we're going to go ahead and press this one as small. So this should appear a little bit smaller especially for when you have lots of different group statuses. And we're going to get rid of the length of the task. We're going to get rid of who's it's assigned to, because I know who that's assigned to. It's a personal to-do list. And we're going to get rid of status, because status is appearing at the top there. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, as you can see, I've got it associated with family. But in this case, I might actually want to add a picture to it. So I'm going to go ahead and change cover. 
and I'm going to go on Unsplash and type in pram. Just get any sort of pram up that could be relatively close to it. Then we'll go into property type and actually change this one to page cover because there's nothing in page content. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to use page cover as a demonstration. So you can start to see, I've got a very visual to-do list going here. I'm going to remove this header just because it's uh, sort of taking up a bit too much space for that bottom half. So there you go. I've got my first task in here. And what I can do is I can go into this and I can begin adding tasks. Now, this is a very basic demonstration of how you can get started with adding some tasks. Um, so let's show you uh, how you can actually sort of take this to a next level. So let me add another task. Um, this week, I need to finish editing for to-do course. So in this case, I might uh, decide to add an icon, not the police icon, the tick icon, and uh, add a cover photo and uh, make it uh, something to do with task. So some of these post-it notes, uh, assign it to me because that might come in handy later and give myself a time limit for it. And say this is a work related task uh, or actually I could just say, keep productive related task. So there we go. I, I'm starting to get a very visual to-do list here. So if that's something that you like already, like having the cover photos as the information, that's something that you can do. And let's say I'm just going to drag it to doing. So the one thing you can do is go group by. You can do it through a whole host of things. If you've got more than one person, for example, you and your partner organizing your house, then you can have, for example, you two both there, which is could be handy. Um, you could even assign it by the status, which we've just shown you, and also the type. So you can start to have a very visual to-do list based on the tasks that you have right in front of you, which is very useful. So we're going to show you next how to utilize maybe the content um, in the page. So let's go back to this uh, status view here on doing, doing, um, doing done concept. So for example, let's just say I go to properties and I go to card preview and I change it to page content. As you can see, it drops off there, which isn't very useful, but at the same time, that's how it's going to work. So I'm going to start adding some tasks here. So what do I need to do? I need to uh, edit module one, create exercises for module three, and spruce up uh, section one, module two. So perfect. I can start seeing some tasks there. But the real magic is when you have your card to maybe medium, you can start to actually see the tasks that you have inside of there, which is really cool. Now, for example, if you were to move the uh, photo down here to the pram uh, inside of here, then you could quite easily see the pram picture and have it full bleed on the page, which is extremely useful. So this is a great way to have a visual to-do list. You can obviously switch between the different types and you can start capturing tasks in this no status area. No status is sort of like an inbox, but you can hide it away if that's something you don't want to see. Now, let's go ahead and create a brand new view. Let's go ahead and uh, add a board view for this example. So obviously the board view is gonna look slightly different as it's reset. However, what I'm gonna call this one is I'm actually gonna call it uh, time to complete. So as we go in here, I'm going to filter based on the length of the task. Now, if the task is shorter than 15 minutes, I can get doing the task. So you can literally have a, uh, actually it's called this one 15 minutes or left. We just demonstrated a very similar one to this a minute ago. So you could actually have a task list based on the time taken to complete the task. And you can even move stuff between the statuses still, and, uh, and it will all appear in the previous section. So naturally, everything will be updated thanks to this board view. So a visual to-do list is actually a great way to be able to coordinate activities. What I think is the magic ingredient is being able to sort of see a preview of some of the tasks and uh, utilize this sort of uh, board maneuvering. If you do want to find a database that is 
identical disk, all you have to do is go to templates, to personal, and to task list. And they have a really good example of how they're using it here for selling a couch, uh, location about renewing stuff. So they can start to add stuff like even like a shopping list or do uh, doing um, an event. So sign up for a 5K and you can actually break the task down easier that. Actually, that's a really good example. So you can just press use this template uh, to be able to bring that up. So um, as you can imagine, uh, we're gonna pause and answer any questions, and then we're gonna move on to the next final section, which is exercise planner, which might be useful uh, for those who are uh, eager to sort of connect stuff up. Now, the one thing you can do if you wanted to is you could connect the relational databases to a to-do list and sort of start adding tasks to it. Um, let me see if I can do that in the background whilst I'm talking, but this could be something that if you wanted to um, be able to connect tasks, that might be useful. Um, so you could say uh, related tasks and uh, create a relational database. Let me show this guys in a minute because obviously I want to be able to make sure it's working before <laughs> necessarily uh, releasing it to the world. But this is something that Marie Poulin here on YouTube um, does a fantastic job on. So here we go. Um, I could be like, uh, actually, I'll do it on the other example. There we go. So it could be like, bang, here we go. So let me just show you this on the page right now as uh, I just am able to find, share, and there we go. So a moment ago, I demonstrated the fact that you can obviously uh, create tasks here. But I just created a related tasks area. And the way that I did that is if I go ahead and delete that, I go to add property and I go down to relation. Um, and I go ahead and connect it to that content calendar that we created earlier. So I'm going to create that content calendar, create relation. I'm going to put this one to be related tasks. So you could have this as a way to see tasks that might be relevant to this project. So there we go. In this case, the course to do list apps. And if you press that, that will take you directly to it, which is very helpful. But that could be a good way to connect up stuff. Um, and it actually might become more relevant in the next feature. We'll touch on slightly the relational databases side of stuff, which I think will be extremely useful for you guys. So um, let's just pause and take some questions. Peter, is there a current data storage system using Amazon likely to change? Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, Amazon's one of the best ways to store and uh, log information. So maybe that's something that um, is probably best posed to them. But AWS seems to be a good system. Um, although I would really like to see a locally stored filing system, especially when they add improved search for sure. Uh, Quamarol put nice, hoping to see that feature soon because I really, really need it. Okay, you said also as I found myself always switching between Notion and my calendar. Yeah, a lot of people have a calendar inside of Notion. Um, I actually have a meetings calendar inside of Notion. So for example, if I have upcoming uh, calendar events, I'm like, I always put them inside of Notion as well so that I can start writing notes ready for that meeting. I also do this with podcasts and other such, such stuff like this, which uh, could be very useful for you. Peter also said, what is your global backup strategy for your Notion content? Um, I really don't have too much of a backup strategy for Notion. And the main reason is because a lot of my stuff isn't like, say, files, documents, um, or tons of useful information for me. It's more of a holistical planning. Uh, and it's almost my brain sort of put out on a paper. So it's in the same concept as if I, say, were to lose my uh, journal or something like that, where I sort of store um, my journal entries and things like that. So I, I have not that much that I would be too upset with. I have to rebuild everything from scratch and obviously remap it out, uh, which would be hideous. But I guess if I wanted to export the content calendar, which has maybe about 30 uncompleted videos and ideas, then I could easily CSV export it and actually save it inside of an application, say like Google Drive, that might be useful for later. So that would, I guess, be my sort of backup plan, but I didn't really have that backup plan. Um, I'm not sure why, I guess, I've had a massive uh, issue with that, but again, not something that I'm 
too worried about Pia. <laughs> um, Torren said, I'll wait for the Android app to have a better performance because I use it as my shopping list and errands list. Um, I noticed in the last week, Torren, that the application has gone a lot better, actually, at being able to handle the iOS performance, at least. When I'm loading up a script, I'm like, okay, it's a lot faster than it was. Obviously, I need to continue to evolve that. Um, ZP, you put, hello, could you say a number of entries for when a database could become slow? I'm using Notion for study purposes. E entry is topic, each entry is a topic which I build on. I don't think databases get, I mean, I've never probably had, so I let give you an example. I have a database uh, for the content calendar that maybe has for existing stuff in it, probably about 100 to 120 entries into it. And I wouldn't say it's slow, um, but I've seen people that may have at the moment a thousand entries and that's where it might get a little bit slower. So maybe if you're above the 500 mark, you might have a little bit of a slower time, but naturally, um, you know, they're looking to improve it constantly. I think they released an update for that. So, uh, Gal Galit, sorry, Galit, um, do you know how to sum up the checkboxes in a row? Do you know how to sum up all the checkboxes in a row? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Ah, do you mean like uh, horizontally? Just let me know um, because yeah, if, if you're, oh, so I'm doing a habit tracker, but I can't seem to sum up how many checkboxes items I have in a week. Um, if you're doing it vertically, uh, a habit tracker would work because you'd be able to uh, actually use a sum feature at the bottom to select which ones have been checked and which have been unchecked and get a percentage based on that. So maybe there's a really good Callan um, habit tracker that they've created uh, inside of the uh, Notion templates that you might want to steal because it has everything pre-set up. So um, that's something that you might want to track out. Uh, the chaps from Notion, uh, Ben, it's probably is here in the chat as well, I think. So he's just waved. So feel free to uh, ask him a few questions. So uh, let's move on to the final experience. And that is the uh, exercise planner. Uh, exercise planner could be very useful if you're looking to, uh, you know, get planning uh, with your different workouts and things like that. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a page. Now I'm going to do it slightly differently from the other ones. So we're going to create, call this one exercise planner. And I'm going to go ahead and give myself some uh, weights. Is there, a, yeah, there's one with weights. Perfect. So at the top, what I'm going to do slightly differently is create a calendar in line. And this is because below, I'm going to go ahead and press and create a table in line. Now I will uh, demonstrate to you what each of them mean. Actually, we're going to go ahead and create a list in line. So here is going to be the main exercises. So I'm going to put the workout calendar here. So we've got a, a good, got ourselves a good title here. And if I ever wanted to open this as a page, you can do that very easily and it won't affect the original. So you can, if you want, you can add an emoji before then, which is cool. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start what's called a menu. I quite like this sort of menu concept. So obviously when you're doing workouts and things like that, you may want to choose a specific workout for the day to link stuff up so that you know what to do. Um, and it could be a range of different things. So you could have, uh, you know, a list of workouts. Let's give this one a title. And uh, let's call this one the 500 meter row. And let's give it the row icon. So there's a guy rowing the boat. And uh, we could say this is really helpful for core. I don't know whether it is actually helpful for core. I'm no fitness expert. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, property for creator because it really doesn't play much of a part in here. So I'm also going to add a number. And that's going to take me two minutes, I'm going to say, uh, to do. So uh, we're going to say minutes taken. And uh, also uh, what I'm going to do is add a type here. I'm going to say intensity. And we're going to add, uh, it's a medium intensity. I don't know. Depends on, this can obviously totally customize to whatever uh, intensity you feel. So I've got a bit of a, you know, a bit of an outline. I can even go to properties here. I can go to and add all of these things. So I know that it's a core workout, it's a medium intensity, and it takes two minutes. So let me add maybe two, three more. Um, let's add, um, sorry, like a 
uh, 400 gram, kilogram um, dumbbells. I think that's how you spell dumbbells, dumbbells like that. And I could say this is an arms workout. And uh, let's just add that for the name's sake. And it's going to take me 10 minutes to do. And it's a high intensity workout. Let's go ahead and add that one as a red uh, one there. So I'm also going to say, uh, I'm going to say a one kilometer run on treadmill, on tread, and say this is a legs workout and say that's one kilometer is probably going to take me seven minutes. I don't know. And going to say it's a medium workout. So I'm going to go and find the run icon very easily there. So I have three workouts that I can get started on right away. But in this case, what I'm going to do before actually going and adding an entry into the calendar is creating a new template. And I do this inside of my thing. I go workout um, day uh, and I actually just give it uh, whatever the day was so I can actually just associate that later. And below what I'll do is I'll give myself a sort of like a, an outline. I'll say, uh, what is the goal of this workout? and add a divider below that, just so it's really easy. So all I did there was add a heading three and a divider just below it. And then I'm also gonna add a heading three, and I'm gonna say workouts today. And that's uh, just an area where I can start adding workout details below. So obviously you can customize this to however you sort of set things up. Uh, and if I go here, so I can potentially fill that out when I go ahead and create a new workout. So in this case, let's say I'm like, okay, um, I am going to go ahead and create a new one and I'm gonna go and press workout day and get things started. So today is a, a boxing focus day. And I can say that uh, up here, I've got boxing there. And uh, I can say today's workout, this is good for planning ahead, is to box um, uh, distance, box for 15 minutes, and then complete the following tagged exercises. So what I can do is I'll go ahead and add a new property. Then what I'm gonna do is go to relation, and I'm gonna go ahead and type in menu. Now I should be able to find the menu list of workouts and create a relational database and then go ahead and uh, add the workouts that I'll be doing, workouts to do. And what I can do is go, okay, I'm gonna do a 500 meter row as well and a 40 kilograms on the dumbbells. So this is a really basic example of how you can potentially use um, a, a database, for example. Um, and if I go to properties up here, I can, I can link the um, day and uh, you can see the day and the workouts that I use. So if I open this up in full, I can start to see, okay, today is a boxing focus and workouts to do, I need to do a 500 meter row, 40 kilogram dumbbells. And then at the end of my session, uh, you could even call this a workout review. You could then say and give yourself a review of how well you have done. And the great thing is if you've opened this up, like for example, if you've planned this in advance, you can go in and go, okay, what do I need to do for the 500 meter row? <laughs> but it might be a specific workout. I actually had previously a workout A, and then it had all the list of activities down here, which was actually really helpful because I could then actually um, see the workouts that I was doing. Um, and you're probably also wondering, why would I add the length of workout in there too? That actually could come in handy when you're building a table um, of all of the uh, connect, like for example, if you wanted to see like how many, uh, how long your workouts collectively worked out towards. So that's how to do and potentially get started with relational databases, especially if you have some more advanced workouts, you could begin connecting them up and actually going in and uh, finding out more about each one as you get started. And the great thing is, if I go out of this view, <laughs> let's try and find a way out of this view. <laughs> if I go back to exercise planner, there we go. Um, I can then see all of the workouts below and continue to add to them. And I could even categorize them as well. For example, if you, if you wanted to, you could give them uh, a workout 
and the multi-select and you could say this one is part of workout a uh, and then you could be able to uh, filter them down so if i go to filter you could be like only show workout a's and there we go so it's even even smarter in terms of being able to see okay you can see your workout a list and your workout b list and your workout c list but if you wanted to tag specific activities and even keep track of progress, this is something that will be really helpful. But I know that Marie Poulin's got some great content around relational databases, as well as um, Rebecca Ford uh, on YouTube, which uh, you should definitely uh, go and find. It's uh, an incredibly valuable resource um, to go and check her content out, and uh, you'll find a, a lot of uh, useful content there. So let's answer a few questions before we decide to wrap things up today. Uh, if you have any questions now, now's the time to ask them. We have another five minutes to address any questions that you have, um, and we'll, we'll make sure to answer any of them in the conversation. So uh, a great question, um, XXINA123, uh, do you have any tips for repeating household chores? Um, this is something that I know a lot of people are looking at because household chores, obviously, um, you want to be able to sort of keep a tally of them and things like that. Um, I'm not particularly using this for that, but you could create a very similar setup to the exercises routine in terms of creating um, this sort of tickable list, these tickable tasks list for the day, um, or take advantage of the templates. For example, if you had a calendar um, database, then what you could have is a database template for your house chores. And uh, you could copy that into um, your calendar view and you can associate it to that day, go into that day and tick them all off. And then you can log that as a future activity, which is quite cool. So that is something that you could do. Um, if you have any questions on that specifically, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Um, Kurnail put, I have 3,500 entry database. The search function works fast enough, but loading the whole database takes a little bit of time and loads as one scrolls to the end. Wow. That is a big database though, in all fairness, like I've never seen anyone with a database that big. Um, so I can imagine that that's gonna take a little bit of time and a big um, chunk. So again, they're gonna improve this and they're working on the core functionalities, which is good. Um, JJ, uh, Joseph Shields, uh, what, what a chap. Um, he put, do you know if uh, Notion is planning of adding charts, graphs like Coda, this would be great for exercise log. Um, sadly, I don't know anything about this yet, um, but as you can imagine, it's something that they continue to hear feedback on. So um, you can continue to sort of pester them on Twitter if you want, uh, JJ. Um, Quamaral learned something new today. Thanks, I'm so glad. This was obviously, you know, touching on not such stuff like relational day spaces as much or formula that much, but at the same time, it sort of touched on a good topic, I think. And Peter, thanks for the webinar today. It's great. Any more questions? We're going to wrap up in a moment. So you've got two minutes to fire them over. How can you obtain the sum of the entries in one database and have that number display on another page? Is that possible? Um, currently, it's not possible unless you did something with relational databases, which was, I guess, would be super advanced. I don't think you can even do that with that. But that's probably something that I can look into it for you if you want to email me. Um, I'll include my email, but you know, at the same time, uh, it might take a week or so to get back to you. So, um, you know, just there. I'm also posting in the the comments um, the course deal today. So uh, we have uh, fifty dollars off the course, which is great. Um, after hours four oh four, do inline databases work the same as the full ones? Can you create a relation to the an inline database from anywhere in your workspace? Inline and full page databases work in the exact same manner. They're literally um, just different ways to view them. Uh, it's sort of like partially opening a book and fully opening a book or viewing one page or viewing two pages at a time. Um, and the great thing is when you go ahead and create a um, full, for example, if you've got an inline database and you're like, I want to turn this into a full one, you can go over to settings and actually convert that into a full page database, which is cool. Um, okay, so Tor Sif, I hope the team adds citation manager as it's also targeted towards students and educators. 
that would be cool. Um, a citations manager would be nifty to have. And I guess they would embed that inside of the web clipper that you can install on Chrome, which is cool. And I believe Firefox now, I'm uh, pretty sure they added that on Firefox. Um, but yeah, anyone have any more questions? I'll just check. Okay. Okay, guys, thank you so much for this week. Uh, I look forward to any of your comments. Um, and if you need an email, drop it to me and I'll happily help you. Next week, we're doing Christmas getting ready. So stay tuned for next Wednesday's webinar. It'd be great to have you here in this chat. Anyway, guys, a big thank you. And I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye.